Danielle Ofri, editor of Bellevue Literary Review. Selecting the art to be on the covers of BLR is always a bit serendipitous. The theme of issue 45 was taking care, and we knew we needed something extra special for the back and front covers, something that would convey the idea of how humans connect to each other and how they take care. So when we stumbled upon these paintings by Tatana Kellner, we knew that this would be it. But we didn't just want the artwork. We wanted to know the story behind it. So we headed to upstate New York to visit the renovated barn that is the studio of artist Tatana Kellner. Tatana Kellner is a wide-ranging visual artist who does painting, drawing, printmaking, papermaking, installations, as well as artist books. Growing up in communist Czechoslovakia, the daughter of Holocaust survivors, she grew up with powerful contradictions between the outer world and the inner world. Art for her is a way to grapple with social issues, both historically and in the current world. When we got to her studio, Tatana wanted to show us the original painting that became the back cover of BLR. It turns out that being an artist requires a certain amount of facility up on a ladder. I had no idea how heavy these paintings would be. I'd only seen these paintings as images on a website. But when we unrolled the painting on the ping pong table that serves as her art table, I learned just how enormous the back cover painting was. So basically this piece, I was working this way during the pandemic, and I think it had to do with uh, sort of being, by, being alone. Well, first I worked on this small, and I had a whole series of pandemic uh, sort of collages, but it had to do with the language of the pandemic. Because I've been always attracted to how language defines and changes culture. Language defines and changes culture? Right. And uh, also the way language is, is used to control society. Because that's something coming from a communist country, that's something, you know, I was very aware of once I came here. Uh, so uh, I sort of always have paid attention to that and that se and I seem to work or react in my work to sort of what's happening sort of with, the, with, with language and with change in society and how it sort of affects everybody. What's the name of this painting? This is called Together. Together. And uh, so, and the way I work, I work very intuitively, and I sort of start something, and then, then there's a response to it. Can, can you talk a bit about the theme of together? Like, what what's here in the painting? Well, I mean, it's a. Uh, yeah, I mean, the way I give titles to things is the way. I, I mean, because I work intuitively, it's not like I don't come. I don't say I'll do this. I mean, not just my painting and the graphics work. Sometimes, if I do a project, and I can show you a couple of those. So I just start on something and then it develops. Sometimes I, this was, I don't think this was anything specific. Sometimes I work from an image which I see in the media, a photograph I take. But frequently I just sort of start with one figure and then arrange. It's almost like an abstract arrangement of space and a human figure seems to be the subject. I mean, yeah. it almost struck me as medical when I first saw it. Maybe it was that, I don't know, person, IV pole, crutches, and, and it caught my eye. When I looked at it more closely, I didn't necessarily see the medical things directly, but it, so for the theme of taking care, of caregiving, that's certainly what stood out to me. Well, I think you can think of it because the way the heads are, it's yes. just, uh, supporting, and you know, also it's obviously a child and an adult, and there's some kind of more authority figure, mm -hmm. uh, observing from a distance, but I think... The way I do work is I try to leave it open so the viewer can interpret it. And uh, sometimes I have to change things, and, you know, mm -hmm. add and subtract in order to achieve that. So this is uh, this dry point. So you scratch into the plate and uh -huh. then it's like a dry point etching, you know. Wow. So I just have fun with these. That's this was actually a different plate and it had all this, this painted plate. With, uh -huh. uh, mistakes on the plate which I made. I oh, love those mistakes. So that's what, so when I'm not painting, I'm doing, I do monoprints. Then we pulled out the painting that became the front cover of BLR issue 45 
and what a palpable sense of excitement and anticipation as we unrolled the painting. Look how small it is. <laughs> wow. This is very bright. Yes. Um, I mean, I do like bright color, but you can, mm. thinking about our theme of taking care, there's something so gentle in the offering. Either they're holding the head, cleaning. Yeah, it's almost like it's, it's caressing, like holding and then caressing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, so the, the head looks unwell. You know, somebody right. who is unwell. So this is somebody taking care of that person. I'm okay. curious if the theme of caregiving in the art world, like how artists take care of each other or mentor other ones, do you have any, does that resonate for you at all? Well, I think because the work I have done at the workshop mm -hmm. for over four decades, yes, I mean, it's about bringing up the next generation and also teaching people or giving them vocabulary so they can practice what they're passionate about. If you're here alone in the studio, all this art, all of this emotion, how do you take care of yourself in there? I think by making more work. <laughs> <laughs> and I think by the best, I'm the happiest when I'm sort of in the middle of trying to solve a puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like almost there, but not quite. Mm -hmm. So it's a frustration and excite is the, is the excitement of the unknown and frustration of sort of not being able to reach it. And then I think when you, when you feel, it's, and it's, as I say, it's, for me, it's intuitive. So when I reach it, it's like, is it, have I really done that? And if I would repaint it now, I would be a different painting if I start mm. uh, changing it. So I think for me, I'm really interested in this, in that edge, mm -hmm. where stuff is sort of not quite there, and there's some kind of tension or it's not quite resolved. And you have to decide, am I uncomfortable with that? Am I comfortable with that uncomfortableness? Kellner showed me around her cavernous studio, lined with paintings large and small, artwork of every type and medium. This piece is repainted many times. And when I said a month, because mm -hmm. I've been struggling with this piece for a month, and it's like deciding, you know, how much realism is there going to be. So I decided that it, this is finished enough for me. For writers, when they have a blank page, mm -hmm. it can either be inspiring or terrifying. Right. When you have the blank canvas, what is, what is it for you? Confounding, confounding, confounding. confounding. And then when I, when I start making a mark or a shape, then I, it's sort of an act, act, for me it's act and react, you know, so, so do something, do something else in relation to that, and then see where you wanna go from there. And then so it's add and subtract at the same time. You know? So writers often say they'll create a character and then they have to follow the character into the novel. So you, when you create other shapes or images, do they? Do you have to take guidance from them, or you're still guiding them? Uh, well, they're guiding me to the next step, uh -huh. and, then, and then I react to that. Uh -huh. you know. Do you ever see art as taking care of us, humanity, people? Is it our caregiver? I think it's food. I think food it's for food us? for our soul. Yeah. Right. Food for the soul. Tatana Kellner showing us how art is integral to taking care. And like any great artist, Kellner knows that taking care sometimes involves converting your art table back to a ping pong table.